So what is this very close election and the runoff that's scheduled for later this month? What does it mean politically and for the capital markets in Turkey and globally? So politically, it's a, a very big disappointment for the opposition. Um, this was their best chance, really, in over a decade to win control. And many polls uh, expected them to win in the first round. Uh, uh, Erdogan really had more support in the heartland than, than many observers uh, expected. And the dropout of a leading opposition candidate just before the election did not help uh, the opposition. Um, I think Erdogan has the edge in the runoff, but it's going to be very volatile in the next two weeks as we move toward that runoff election on May 28th. All right. So Turkey's at kind of a nexus point politically and, and geographically when it comes. It's kind of a meeting point between Europe and Asia. Also has close ties to Russia, even though it is a NATO country. Um, I want to get back to the economic implications of everything we're looking at. We're seeing the Turkish lira at historic lows compared to the dollar. Also inflation spiking there about 40 percent, I believe. What does that potentially mean for the global economy if the opposition wins? There's thoughts that they would uh, have their central bank raise rates. Does that, does that have an echo effect when it comes to the United States and the rest of the global economy? I don't think uh, Turkey, Turkey is a very large economy, about a uh, one trillion U.S. dollar GDP, uh, 85 million population. And yet uh, any interest rate moves in Turkey are, are completely separate, not only from the U.S. and Europe, but even most emerging markets. Erdogan and his uh, rotating crew of uh, financial advisors and central bank governors have pursued incredibly unorthodox policies. As bad as 40 percent inflation sounds, it was as high as 80 or 90 percent in the fall. And then he started uh, making adjustments before the election. Um, he doesn't have uh, uh, an inclination to change this very unorthodox policy. So you'll see real distortions in the economy. Uh, and you'll also see, unfortunately, if he wins, uh, you will see a continued pivoting and playing uh, playing the U.S. and Russia off of each other. A lot of the support that Erdogan got in the last six months have been from certain Gulf countries and from Russia. So if he continues to play the U.S. and Russia against each other, does that have any impacts that investors should be especially mindful of. Um, we're seeing Russia and China get closer and closer. And as our Martin Soong highlighted, the G7 planning to issue a warning about their use of economic leverage in other, in other countries. Excuse me. So if Erdogan uh, wins the next term, I think he'll be uh, continue to be disruptive. He will most, even though Turkey is a member of NATO, he will most likely not cooperate with um, uh, Western sanctions against Russia. Uh, because Russian economic uh, relations have been um, a, really a lifeline for Erdogan. Uh, the hope, if the opposition had won, would be a return to orthodoxy and a return to more liberal uh, pro-West pro foreign policy. Uh, right now, that seems much less likely, which is why you have the local market down. It was down, as, as um, your colleague said, more than 6 percent. It's still down about 3 percent. Um, and the outlook looks quite weak for the Turkish lira. Uh, this unfortunately means more bad news for Turkey, uh, but I do think it can be isolated. It's not going to dramatically affect global markets.